Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to another video. So I'm six months into owning this PlayStation 5 and honestly, it's not that big a deal, but I can't help but still be super excited about it. If you haven't been lucky enough to get one yet, there's still a lot here to unpack, but having been a PC gamer for the last decade, as well as being a new dad, for some reason, game consoles have just struck a chord with me in my lifestyle right now. I was once a super sweaty World of Warcraft and Overwatch player, but today I just want to dive into my PlayStation 5 a second time, since as I mentioned, it's still really excites me. At launch, it was badass, and it's only gotten better with time, and it's super easy to get caught up into spec races and Xbox versus PlayStation, but really, this video is just me fanboying over the PlayStation 5 because it's awesome. From taking 10 years off from consoles to getting the Xbox Series S as my first real re-entry into consoles, the PlayStation 5 took that whole experience to the next level, and I can't stress enough how happy I am with it. If it sounds like I'm a fanboy, it's because I am, but I'm also an Xbox fanboy and gaming overall is in a great spot right now, for me at least. So here's my six month review of the PlayStation 5. Hey, and if you're new here, I really appreciate you stopping by. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe if you loved it. Otherwise, everyone you know and love will start saying the word moist more frequently. Alright, so diving into the build and aesthetic, it really holds up well. I liked it a lot at launch, but somehow I've really grown to absolutely love it. I've had plans since getting this console to maybe get the PlayStation 5 black plates, but I haven't really pulled the trigger yet since I still really dig the stock plates. And a nice touch I love are the LEDs, especially in a dark room. I wish Sony had native settings for this to change the color, although I heard you can get kits that can do that for you. Maybe someday in the future I'll give one of those kits a try. One thing I'm not a fan of though after the last while is actually the stand when used horizontally. I often have to set it up three or four times to get it to stay, although I mostly just use this vertically anyways. Overall, the system is a bit tall, so it's not really going to fit everywhere, but I'm also curious to see if they'll be making a PlayStation 5 Slim at some point, but upright, it's almost the size of my small gaming PC. Either way, you will be able to put it into any setup one way or another. For me, I've had it set up on this TV desk setup, a monitor, my gaming bookshelf, and of course the living room TV. It kind of just works anywhere you put it, but let me know down in the comments, where would you put it? So outside of the look and build, one of the major things I love about the PS5 is that it's literally gotten better with time. New features, performance improvements, and more. I won't go through everything, but let me just start with the biggest updates that I've enjoyed so far, and that's probably starting with VRR, or Variable Refresh Rate. With their VRR update, so many games that were previously locked to 60 FPS got such a beautiful increase in frame rate between 100 and 120 FPS. For games like Horizon Forbidden West, both the Spider-Mans and even the recently released Last of Us Part 1, I got an incredible upgrade in experience and simply put, I love it. And while you do need a VRR enabled display to enjoy this feature, it's becoming more frequently available at the baseline for a lot of TVs and monitors. And a huge one for monitor users is the release of 1440p support. And it killed me that this wasn't supported previously considering the Xbox Series S had it, but really it's a very welcomed addition. And within the last week, I've been playing The Last of Us on my 1440p monitor and it's a striking update from the 1080p previously. And I'm late to the game, but the SSD expansion being enabled is super nice. I know this wasn't available right at launch, but I recently installed an SSD for that extra storage. Considering PlayStation Plus is absolutely badass now, storage upgrades are a must have. What made me appreciate my PS5 more was their update in combining both PlayStation Now and PlayStation Plus. I couldn't believe that they had them separately previously, especially when Game Pass existed as it did, but it's better late than never. With the monthly games being such a treat, the service definitely redeems itself, and it feels good playing Need for Speed for the first time in almost 20 years. The last time I played Need for Speed was Need for Speed Underground. Being able to demo a new AAA release or play one of the PlayStation hits is straight up magnificent. I've been deep into God of War recently and I simply can't wait for Ragnarok. And of course we gotta talk about gaming because really this overall is what excites me the most. Every PS5 game I've played recently has been absolutely incredible, and even some PS4 titles have received frame rate increase updates for the PlayStation 5. And VRR titles are just so immersive. I haven't yet finished Horizon or Cyberpunk, but my only limiting thing here is time, which is why on a personal level, I think the new gen systems are perfect for me. Not that my gaming PC doesn't have a bomb ass SSD, but honestly after a long day, I really just want to melt backwards into a couch or chair and be gaming in literally one minute. And for the PlayStation 5, it delivers it so well. 
Give me a good story in a game, a thick couch, and a hot coffee, a controller, and I'm happy. Even those PC games I used to play like Overwatch are still super enjoyable. And it's not that you can't go hardcore at your favorite games, because some days I can just turn it on and I'm at my desk stomping kids in Call of Duty. But overall, I really dig the exclusives PlayStation has to offer, and having been off PlayStation for more than a decade, I've got a library of games to get through that have already been remastered, like The Last of Us. And it's not just the games itself as well, I mean you can do it with any console, but just sitting back after a long day working my desk job, it's nice to not be at a desk, and it's something I didn't know I missed. Apart from gaming though, I'm absolutely spoiled by this system being an all-in-one entertainment package. Sony was the OG to do this back in the day with the PlayStation 2 being a DVD player and a game console, and it's obviously developed so much in that time. I simply really appreciate the apps on my PlayStation 5, I ended up using them more than I anticipated. I've got HomePods and Google Google speakers and stuff kicking around my office and living room, but I actually play a lot of music through my PlayStation 5. It's super neat and accessible, that and it's super nice to be able to play tunes in the background while gaming. The UI itself is really nice and I dig the simple layout. The full page graphics for a game and the special background music is a really nice touch. All the streaming apps work flawlessly as well, Disney+, Plus, Netflix, Amazon Prime put out 4K HDR images and it truly looks amazing. If you're someone who's considering a streaming box or dongle, factor this as an option since it really gets the job done. And while it's definitely not for everyone, sometimes it's really nice for the kid and the missus to crowd around and watch me get absolutely dunked on in Fall Guys. It's easy, family fun, and not something I would have had as comfortably at my PC in the office. And I really want to give a specific mention to the DualSense controller since honestly, this is one of the most amazing wow factors for me with the PlayStation 5 release. The PS5 graphics are top notch, we know that, but having a new level of immersion from the physical feedback of a controller is simply badass. Again, why the hell am I so excited about this? Probably since I've been using a mouse and keyboard for so long, but the rumble and adaptive triggers are just so cool. Especially gaming things like Call of Duty and the triggers have real resistance, or pulling a bow in Horizon, there's something so satisfying about it. I do wish the battery lasted a little bit longer, but honestly I'm not really throwing down long gaming sessions like I used to, and charging it back up is super easy, especially since I have a spare controller. I personally prefer rechargeable batteries on my controller, although I know some folks hate it. In like a fine wine or cheese, I don't know, I don't like either of those, but the PlayStation 5 has only gotten better with age. It's only two years into the cycle of this system, and I'm looking forward to what the developers are going to do with releases. I'm excited for God of War Ragnarok, Spider-Man 2, and even the non-exclusives like the cesspool that is definitely going to be Modern Warfare 2, and truly there's a lot more to be excited about. And as much as I gush about the PlayStation 5, I will also have a Series X long-term review coming up as well. I know I sound a little bit over the top, but I'm feeling almost reborn into the console space with this new generation having been a PC gamer for the last decade. Anyways, that's been it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Till next time.